Hello everyone and welcome back to Can We Be Real Please. Bags is suffering a little bit, but that's fine. And um, Matthew was here as well. How are you not suffering? Because you were ripping in last night to the red wine yep. and somehow I've turned up today with a few spews under yep. my belt. You are broken, mate. I am broken. Yeah. You broke me. <laughs> <laughs> I break them. I break them a lot. Don't I, Derek? I, I break them. I, I don't have, I don't get uh, hangovers. At all? Nope. Far out. Never. I think my father forbade them. I had a hangover <laughs> once when I was 16 and I had to call in sick to my job at the fish and chip shop. Yeah. And I'll never forget my father standing in the doorway of my bedroom mm. and saying to me, no, mate. No, mate. No. Go to work. And I said, I can't. And I was vomiting into a bucket by the side of the bed. And he said to me, you do whatever you want, but you never call in sick yeah. because you've hit the piss the night before. Totally. Irresponsible. You, you never do that. Yes. And he was a massive piss head and a massive worker. Yep. And I think it just had such a profound psychological effect on me mm. that I never have. I've never had another hangover in my life. Okay. But that's so but you must feel it still. Mate. You don't feel it? or It's, it's forbidden. Like you, you've blocked it. You've blocked it that hard. It's forbidden. You're not feeling any of the stuff. Nothing. Far out. Amazing. No. That's wild. I love it. It's forbidden. Mm. And the other thing I'm doing, I had a little tiny workout this morning. Mm. Yeah, I'm working out again. Okay, mate. That's no shit. Um, I'm hard as nails. You warm, are. Like, what is going on? To warm but tough. But yes. I haven't been working out in ages. And um, lately I realized, oh, I've been coasting. I've been coasting for a long time. I had a big period during the lockdowns right. where I... Ate well and worked out hard because yes. I was bored and couldn't do anything else. What are you? Are you benching or what are you doing? No. Like? Well, here's the thing. I'm doing age appropriate working out, which is gross. Okay. But I think, all right, okay, I'll I'll do that. So, I'm using resistance bands. Okay. And um, not only that, I'm following a lady on YouTube, and because I believe people's, you know, have said, okay, this is good for you. Right. It's really effective. Yes. And this lady, it's, it's fitness with PJ. Right. And the issue is it's, have a look for me, Matthew, and just see um, the stats, PJ's stats. Now, it's fitness for women over 40. Sure. Now, the issue is that she is a woman, I don't know, she's, she's over, well over 50. Now, I'll just tell you, she's in this video, she's wearing a tank top. Okay. That says on the front of it, so tired of being, what does it say? It's, so tired of being a, so tired of being a millionaire. Ah. Oh. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? Right. She's got over 100,000 subscribers. And she's, she's killing it. She's killing it. Yeah. She's got a little Madonna mic. Oh. And sometimes she'll stop the video halfway through to go, oh my gosh. And she'll run over to the, whatever it is she's filming herself on and go, oh, great. Oh, it is filming. Mm -hmm. You won't believe the number of times I've done a whole workout and realized I haven't been filming. Oh. And then she'll run back to her little towel yeah. on the ground. She's, it's in her lounge room. Right. Okay. And then she'll just start waffling on about, we're thinking of buying a camper. I, I want to do a workout. What are you, what are you, are you talking? Serious? Yeah. Like you don't need to know that. And yeah, she's right. just. Okay, and four, and three. Okay. And that's, okay, that's what we need, PJ. Yes. My husband thinks that, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> so is that to distract you so that you don't notice that you're, like, because you know how working out is a punish. Like, or, we all hate it, yeah, right? Yeah, I know. So is she trying to, like, give you story time so that you're focusing on the camp? Or and is she just you... doing that thing that She's a some women do where they, <laughs> no, no, where they just tell you stories about people you don't know? Right, yep. Yep. You know, like yes. you go, you talk to your mum and she's like, oh, you won't believe what Carol said. Yes. Oh, well, you know how Carol was renovating? Yeah. And, and. Um, like, I've got no fucking idea about Carol. I don't know, Carol. Yeah. I don't fucking, I don't, mm. I don't know. I don't care if she's renovating. Yeah. No, you know, you do. Mm. Remember Carol was renovating and John said she couldn't do the bathroom. And she said, well, John, there's no point in doing anything then if you don't do the bath bathroom, sell houses. Mm. And I said, Carol, you're right. And I said, Michelle always says that, don't you? And she, because Michelle watches the shows. Yes. And, you know. You Do you just go along with it, though? Because you can't well, be you bothered can't fighting. So you just, have to let, you just have to listen to the story. And not only that, she's told me the entire story yeah. that morning. Yeah. <laughs> and But you can't say, yeah, mum, you told me, I heard the whole story, and I don't know Carol or yeah. John. Yeah. Or give a fuck yeah. about their renovation. Mm. PJ's doing all of that. And you don't know her. No. <laughs> 
I just want to work out that's going to work all of my muscle zones or whatever. Yes. And not hurt me. Yes. Um, Without you know, camper stories. And help me live 15 years longer. Yes. Because I'm reading the book that says, oh, well, if you want to live longer, you've got to do exercise. Right. And these exercises are good for your joints. And so they say. And I read, you know, and I and I don't want to spend all the mo money and all that. And I don't want a personal trainer who's going to be up my ass. You know what I mean when I say that. Not like the lady the other week. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind that <laughs> a personal trainer like that. But, um, but you know, but I don't, I don't want that anymore. I don't want to have to go and meet, you know, Jaden at the park yeah. so he can go, come on, mate, come yeah. on, mate. <laughs> I don't want that ever again. <laughs> My daughter says to me every night, which is very sweet because she's 13, so mm. you would think that she wouldn't want to borrow of me, but she'll say, hey, mum, do you want to watch TV? Mm -hmm. Which is cute. But, mm -hmm. you know, they don't watch normal TV like we used to. They stream, mate. There's no freedom. There's no, there's no antennas in the walls anymore, is I, there? Oh, it's Wednesday night. Let's watch Designing Women. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I can't remember what we used to watch. What did we used to watch? Well, like on a Wednesday night, I'm just trying to think of the TV guide. Yeah. So in our house, it was Sale of the Century at 7. Yeah. Every Sale night. of the Century. Yeah. Glen Ridge. And we had a bit of Tony Barber bit days. Of Tony Barber. Yeah. Uh, and then you may have rolled into like a Friends. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, do you remember Paul Clitheroe with Money? No. We're talking about Money. God, money. I would never. No, we'd never watch anything like that now. We house. had that on. We never had any money. Frasier. So that was too depressing. Yes, yes. And um, oh. Healthy, Wealthy and Wise. Huey. No. Uh, Huey's Quickie Adventures. Oh, my dad loved Huey. Yeah. Oh, God, he said, he'd say, I want to watch Huey. Yeah, he loved Huey. Burke's Backyard. We obviously oh, are not a big fan of that now. Burkey. <laughs> yeah, no, but. But at the time. Road when you test didn't know bloody, about the. Road test. Yeah, no, we didn't know about that stuff. We didn't know who he actually was in real life. <laughs> yeah. He just road test a cavoodle. Yeah. Let's, let's go, Burkey. Um, yeah, so anyway, but now. Yeah, they, they don't have any patience for anything, but yep. I think she just wants to hang out with me. Mm -hmm. So she'll say, can we watch TV, Mum? And uh, she the shows that she's watching at the moment are, impressively, South Park. She wanted okay. to watch South Park, yes. and she started from episode one, right. series one, which is just mind-blowing for yeah, me because yeah, I yeah. remember watching that in the, 90s. the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, my God, mm. oh, my God. Yes, I remember this, I remember that. And it's hilarious because I'll say to her, do you know what this is? Do you know what, like, remember the, the episode where um, Jesus and Pals? Is it Jesus and Pals or Jesus and Friends? Mm -hmm. Jesus and Pals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, can you say that for me, Matthew? And it, this is when Jesus has his own talk show. Yep. And, of course, there's a, which one is it? Jesus and Pals. Jesus and Pals. And he's up in the bleachers with the audience. Yeah. And um, they're asking questions of his guests, and it's Jerry Springer. Yeah. Vale, he used to have some friends. And, um, and so... It gets out. The producers wanted to get more and more raucous, and and then it gets to the point where the audience are just asking bizarre things that have nothing to do with the guests, <laughs> just like Jerry. Yeah. And I had told them about this episode ages ago, where this guy just suddenly stands up and goes, "I know the man touched some children, but he's Michael Jackson." Yeah. Just out of nowhere. Yeah. And this episode pops up, and I went, "Oh my god, this is the Michael Jackson episode." And she mm -hmm. goes, "How can you tell?" And I said, "I can see the guy in the audience in the Michael Jackson jacket." Mm -hmm. It's like all these references that she just has no idea about. Totally, yeah. She doesn't know anything about it. So then I'll go, okay, stop, stop down, stop down, and I'll quickly jump to YouTube and show her an episode of Jerry Springer. And she's like, this is insane. See, that's so good that you can do that now. Isn't because it? Because like when we were growing up, um, like The Simpsons or something like that, there were yes. all these references for the, you know, for mum and dad yeah. that the kids had no idea, had you know. No idea. But now you as mum can stop and go, hang on. It's so funny too yeah. because remember Jerry used to be on every afternoon yeah. after school. And to us it was like hilarious and ludicrous, but it was just normal. Yep. And to her she's like, no, that was not a show. Yeah. I'm like, oh, God, why do you see Steve? Yeah. Steve, Steve, <laughs> yeah. Steve, Steve. Yeah. Steve. She's like, this is crazy, right? So, um, but it's sometimes, of course, she's 13 and she's pretty innocent. So sometimes South Park is just too much. Like, mm. we'll be watching it and I'll go, I'm actually uncomfortable. Like, yeah. there's Satan and Saddam Hussein mm -hmm. having a romance mm -hmm. and rooting. Yeah. And, and Satan getting his feelings hurt because mm. Saddam's saying, just fuck me or whatever. Like, it's <laughs> yeah, just. Yeah, it's messed up. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah. so messed yeah. up, you and know? she's 13. Yeah, and she's, <laughs> and like, sometimes we can coast yeah, through. Yeah, more importantly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we can coast through a minute or two, but sometimes it just goes no, that's, on. That's a, definitely a, let's and, turn this off moment. Right. And, yeah. cause, and then the other show, and I follow her lead because she's pretty, like, she'll go, okay, I'm. 
I've hit the wall. She's she's telling you. Yeah, she. I'll go. How are you going, mate? And she'll go. Yeah. I've, That's enough. This, yeah. yeah. And we'll or, and I'll say to her, we can skip this episode. And she'll go. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 Let's, good call, mum. Yeah, she's very good. <laughs> So the other show she likes to watch is Modern Family. So it's hilarious. We've got these two. Light and shade. Yeah, totally. Right. Nice and easy. You know it's safe. Yes. And I'll say to her, is it a South Park night or a Modern Family night? Right. She'll go, I think it's a Modern Family night. I just, yeah. I just want a relaxing Modern Family night. So this one night we're watching South Park and it's it's off the chain. Yeah. I can't remember what was going on, but it was off the chain. Mm-hmm. And she went, uh. It's too, it's too much. It's too much. Let's skip to Modern Family. Mm-hmm. So we skip over. Mm-hmm. And then the weirdest thing happens. It's an episode where Gloria, we, of course, we love Gloria. She's our favourite. She's everyone's favourite. And uh, she's pregnant in this series. We're up to series four. Yeah. Heavily pregnant. And Jay and Phil are having this conversation. And this plays out. You remember before, and I told you I was wanting to know the, the sex of the baby for practical matters. Well, that wasn't true. I'm kind of afraid of having a girl. Give me a break. That's not a thing. You'd just rather have a boy. Everyone would rather have a boy. No, I'm actually scared. I get boys. It's girls. They're they're, they're complicated. Half of Claire's childhood, I did everything I could to try to turn her into a boy. Well, whatever your issues were, you and Claire are good now. Yeah, but I may not get that kind of time with this new one, and I can't screw it up. I don't think I'm sensitive enough to raise a girl. Jay, you're being sensitive right now. I mean, I was pretty hysterical. You calmed me down. I, I don't think you're the guy you used to be. So you're saying that if I can deal with you, then I can handle any other little girl? I think I'd put it up. No, but I, I, mean, I, think, I, think, I think that's right. Thanks. Cute, right. But, so we just keep watching for like maybe a minute or two minutes. Sure. And then I just went and I was kind of like was hurting me mm-hmm. and I turned to her and I went oh, that really hurt me that bit and she goes what bit and I said the bit where they agreed that everybody really wants a boy mm-hmm. and she goes and I said how like did you notice that and she goes yeah it really hurt me too and then she paused it mm-hmm. and we just kind of looked at each other for a minute and we both went oh Oh, that's really hurtful. It's really painful that they, and they didn't even address that as in like, that's a really fucked up thing for us both to say, isn't it? Like yeah. that didn't even, that wasn't even the point of the conversation they were having. Yeah. And Modern Family is a show that has, it's, it's recent. Like yeah. it, it's not like it's. And it's hugely, it was hugely right. influential, hugely yeah. like was all about being modern and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, we're so cool. We have a gay family and we have a gay family that's adopted an Asian baby and all this stuff. But then they're just brushing over that. And they have this gross conversation about, yeah, yeah, that's normal. Everyone Everyone wants a a boy. Yeah. Would prefer a boy. And, um, and then it's like, oh yeah, I'm being like a girl because I'm being hysterical and you're handling that, Mm. you know, because I'm being such a, you know, idiot and you're handling that. Mm. And we were like, oh, that sucks. And I thought, fuck, fancy turning off, South Park. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. And then After turning Satan, on. Satan, Satan is. Because, yeah, Satan's you know. like, because Saddam Hussein won't suck Satan off and <laughs> Satan's really sad about it. And then that's the safe. <laughs> and we were, yeah. And we're like, oh, well, at least it's not hurting our feelings. Yeah. You know? It's, yeah. It's, it was really So did you sad. go back to. We just, went back to South Park, I think. I think we skipped the episode. Right. We went, let's go back to South Park. Let's <laughs> skip that episode. <laughs> go to one that's a bit more fun. Yeah. Like Kyle's mom is a bitch. She's a big fat bitch. She's the biggest <laughs> bitch in the whole wide world or whatever. But, yeah, I was crook. Yeah. 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 Because I said, and I said to her. How, okay, how, well, you know, how, how does that work in a TV show like that? There would be a writer that would write that joke. Because you can tell, obviously, it's, it's being written to get that joke out at the end about, you know. Well, every, yeah. I, if I can handle, if you, you know, you, all that kind of thing. Yeah. So are they writing that and then someone's approving that to go in? Well, lots of people are approving. Yeah. So it's not including just, the actors, including yeah. everyone. So obviously everyone's just gone, yeah. That's good. That's fine. That's fine. That's true. Yeah. I said to Dal, I go, I know it's true, but. What, what, what do you mean? That everyone wants a son. Like, I. Uh, is that a thing? Well, I think it is. You think it is? Yeah. And please, please get in touch with us, you know, through the podcast in the various ways to let See, us know what you think. Well, well my mum definitely wanted. Girls. Yeah. I, when I say everyone, I mean men. <laughs> ah, right. 
I mean, there's two men talking. Yes. And probably a lot of, I think a lot of women do want sons as well. I, I just, in that moment of being hurt by mm-hmm. it, and she and I were just kind of looking at each other, I said, you know, I know it's true. Mm. She goes, yeah, I know. I said, but it just hurts that they said it and they just, they just didn't and then, care and they yeah. just didn't make a thing out of it. They didn't even say to each other, oh, that's fucked that everyone, yeah. you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was like, yeah. We just both kind of accepted, yeah, everyone wants sons. Everyone knows that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. It was awful. I think ultimately everyone does want a son. Yeah, I think so. I think I think most people. But like you said, write in and, and let us know please. because you know. I think when you I, I, get I, a son, you'll go, oh, okay, yeah, then it'd be nice to have a daughter. Right. But, so yeah, you think everyone wants the son first, at least, or if you you've got a daughter, then you go, okay, let's get this, let's get a son. Right. Come on, mate. Yeah. Got to get a son. Yeah. Do you think? I, I I don't think that way at all. No. Yeah. Right. No. I, I'm just very much of whatever comes oh, out, mate. Yeah, I know. Ten fingers, ten toes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. as long yeah. as it's healthy, yeah. you know. But that's what everyone says, which obviously, and I understand. You don't need to tell me that that's ableist and all that. That's a, I know. I get I understand that. I'm just joking about the old school kind of like how people go. Oh no, I don't care as long as it's healthy, you know. Mm. Bullshit. So you think I'm bullshitting? No, not you. But I'm but, just no, saying. But, like, but, but I'm think, saying that's. Like, a, I think yeah. people would always say that, but it's mm. like. Oh, I think I couldn't to keep care. it real. People I want a son. Yeah, yeah. I reckon. But it, is it does it all start from? Well, it goes all the way back to that king that would kill all of his wives for getting daughters. Who was that? Oh, there's lots of that, and there's yeah. lots of cultural reasons in other cultures where you Chinese, need. Where well, like, absolutely, one child policy. Mm. Well, it, well, we and that's fucked them up now, hasn't it? Totally, because they're uh, they're in decline now. Aren't yeah, because they? yeah. they've got enough girls. Yeah, so that to change it, but all, all those little baby girls left in markets, you know around China, like fucking, if they were lucky. Um, but, yeah, so there's lots of cultural reasons why you want a son, you know. Still? Yeah, in lots of cultures, definitely. In lots of cultures, but, like, in, in Australia, Europe. Yeah, I reckon. In Australia? Yeah. People want a son. Yeah. Um, when, and, you, and you say men want a son. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, like, that's what succession is all about, and it's based on the Murdoch family. Yeah. yeah. You know? But, yeah, I mean, that's what. That's all about is about still Rupert, Rupert Murdoch's smartest kid is his daughter, but he's just like, nah, yeah, but nah, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you're not going to give her the whole fucking business. Mm-hmm. Why? Mm. Oh, you just don't. Yeah. Because? It's just not the done thing. It's just not, he just can't what, okay, envisage so what is, it. Yeah, right. He just okay. can't wrap his head around yes. it. But that's changing though. I, That's I changing don't that, think like, it uh, is, but it would have to be a younger generation thing, and I don't know. I'm not mm-hmm. part of that, but mm-hmm. I, I just, you know, people in the police force only like 20, 30 years ago, yep. they would, wouldn't give women um, promotions because they'd go, well, you're going to get married and you're going to have babies. Oh, the, and that has in a lot of industries yeah. uh, where they would consider that. Absolutely. Oh, well, we can't really. In fact, in the coppers, they kind of sacked you. When they you kind had of sack you, yeah. Well, I worked with someone that got sacked um, after getting pregnant. So if that was a and that, real that, that solid 2012, thing, 2012. So it's not that long ago. That's what I mean. If that was a solid thing, then yep. Then imagine how much it's still a psychological thing, even if you can't say it. Sure, it's still around. All the men working then, the young men working then, have still got it mm-hmm. in their minds. Mm-hmm. They can't say it. They're mm-hmm. just thinking, okay. Well, she just got married, which means. There's She's a kid on the way in a couple of years. Have a baby, so right. am I going to give her this job? Wow. Yeah. So it's all those things. Mm. Mm. People don't want to educate daughters. And again, it's like we were talking about last night about in the developing world, mm-hmm. when you can only afford to educate one child, you're not going to educate your daughter. You're going to send her out to work to help pay for educating your son because mm-hmm. he's going to work his whole life. Mm-hmm. And he's going to pour money back into you when you're elderly because there's no retirement fund, there's no pension, so that's just economics. So you see little girls who are trained as like circus animals to walk a tightrope and do tricks for tourists, mm-hmm. and they're little and cute. And mm-hmm. then when they get too old for that and they're not cute anymore, then they go and work in factories and stuff to pay for their brothers to go to school. So that's not, and their brothers are the guys who come to Australia and end up, you know, mm-hmm. living here mm-hmm. and sending money home. Mm-hmm. So it's not that far removed from us. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, it's a smaller world than we realize. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, that's and it's all part of our culture. So this idea that, oh, it's all solved, guys. We don't need feminism anymore. It's solved. Sure. <laughs> it's, like, fuck it's not. It's, it's, no, it's not. nowhere near it. No. Yeah. No, it's right here. Yes. Yeah, so that's why Dal and I go, <sighs> yeah, we know. Yeah, okay. It's just easier when you've got a son, I think. You don't, you don't worry about their safety as much, you know. You're not worried about, oh, he's going out for the night. Will he be okay? Call me, call me, text me, text me. Mm-hmm. And it's a boy, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. It's all that stuff. It's just, I think people think it's going to be easier. And do you see that changing in our lifetime? Do you uh, see well, no, it's gotten worse recently. Yeah, but do you, but do you, like do you see it getting to the point where it's safe for a woman to go out and that's not an issue? No, no, God mm. no. That's um, God no. That's not, yeah. No, 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 no. Mm. That's what I mean. It's gotten worse mm. lately. Like women's rights are being pulled back. Mm-hmm. No, I mean we still. Australian women are still murdered more than one a week. Mm-hmm. That never changes. Mm-hmm. No matter how much money they throw at it, no mm-hmm. matter what, no matter how much we talk about it, mm-hmm. it just never changes that number. Um, I heard someone talking on a podcast about how in a domestic violence s- situation, it's always or often it's the woman who will leave the home, be put into a financially stressed situation. Yes. And the laws should change that it's actually the male that should leave the home and that the woman should stay in the home with the children. Yeah. But the the male who has offended should be removed from the home rather than it being a a woman fleeing. Yeah. Which would fix some of the situation there. Yeah, but it's not about the law. I mean, it's not. It's not about the law. In that moment. She's not asking. She has to flee. Yeah. No one's asking what the law is in that moment. Yes. She's just finding her moment. Yes. She's just trying to f- either she's literally running out the door with mm-hmm. her kids mm-hmm. or she's waiting sh- for her moment when she can go, mm-hmm. you know, like, so, so she's not consulting the law mm-hmm. or, you know, if he, if she's in a violent situation, she's, he's not uh, obeying anybody. Mm-hmm. He's not following any rules. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's the thing. There's no um, legal. All you can do is have support places, support structures, have places where you can get advice, physical support, um, places where you can go and stay. And the, the, the money that you're talking about, like they, they keep throwing money at this yeah. to try and fix it. That money needs to go to education for men. Yeah, definitely. That's, what, that's, that's going to solve and also supports- some of the problem, like as in men getting more educated on how to – but also support not, services for men. <laughs> support services for men, I think. Like we've got a friend called James Harding. Um, I'm going to say we through the other podcast, Australian True Crime, and he does work with men with anger issues. He works with offenders, mm-hmm. with men who have perpetrated mm-hmm. domestic violence, family mm-hmm. violence. And he was a standover man for drug dealers mm-hmm. years ago. And um, he he has bikies and he has former offenders who work for him. Mm-hmm. They go into prisons. They also hold um, meetings around town, and so they're ca- they're counsellors effectively, but they're not like straight skinny social worker guys who men find annoying. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like big butch burly guys who other big butch girl not girly burly guys can sit with maybe for a weekend around mm-hmm. a, a mm-hmm. campfire in the bush. Or maybe down at the beach and having a coffee and just be real about their anger mm-hmm. and about where their anger really comes from. And where, 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 right, I mean, it's, everyone has a different scenario, but where where does the anger come from? Childhood? What yeah, it, like, usually, of course. And they're angry at someone? Exactly, someone else. And, and then they take it out on their family. Yes, because I oftentimes this they trust this woman. They, like she loves them mm. and she will give them more chances than anybody else. Mm. And they can't take it out on their abuser mm. because either that person's not around anymore or they're still scared of that person or whatever. But this woman loves them. She cares for them. She keeps giving them chances. It's a, you know, it's a complicated 
mm. codependent situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's shit. It's a shit situation, but it becomes its own ecosystem. Yes. And they, but when they are in this group where they can talk to other men who they can will get say, this off their chest. yeah, and but these men hold them accountable. Yeah. And they really say, okay, you got to step up and be a man. Yep. You know, and be a dad. Mm-hmm. And maybe that relationship's not repairable, mm. but, you know, you, and then they stop them blaming the women and it's unbelievable mm. the results they get. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. And so you can, so it's not about educating and shaming men. It's not mm-hmm. about that whole thing of saying, you've got to learn, you've got to change, you're toxic. It's not about that. That's never going to help anybody. That's going to make people run away. Of from course. It further, right? And angrier. Yeah. Yeah, that's not helpful to anybody. It's mm-hmm. about embracing them mm-hmm. and um, educating working in, a, with, in a way that's yeah, supporting them in their way of wanting to learn. I think support is the word. Mm. It's about support. <clears throat> like, yeah, the anger's coming from pain. It's coming from somewhere. Mm-hmm. So you got to hold them up as well. Mm-hmm. Got to hold ha- hold up the whole family. Mm-hmm. When I was in, um, I think it was Jordan. I went to Jordan with Save the Children, and um, we went to this family violence center. And it was really interesting because it, it was rife there. It was a huge problem, mm. similar, and a lot of women being killed and all that. And um, I remember in Lebanon, but it was interesting. They just had no outreach for the men at all. Mm. And I was, uh, there's a lot of focus on taking the women and the children away and keeping them somewhere secret because their biggest thing was the men finding them and killing them. Mm. Like that was huge. And so it was all about these secret hideouts all over the mm-hmm. country. And I was saying, do you have any family counselling or any reach out to the men? And they were like, no, they were baffled by that idea, completely baffled. So I thought, well, at least we, I think we try a bit mm-hmm. here to have a bit of holding up of everybody and, you know, which I, I think is really important. Mm. You can't demonise anybody, I don't think. Mm. So, yeah, that question in which I asked, which was, do you see this getting fixed in our lifetime? The answer is oh. no, unless some of these things yeah. get put in place. Yeah, I don't think women... Uh, and, yeah. and funding goes to these yes. places for men to go and actually spend time to yeah, but also we conversations. Yeah, but also we have to keep women's, um, you know, women's rights at the forefront, you know, when we're in, the pl- in a place yeah. where... We're still, you know, women's rights to their own bodies and to things like, you know, pregnancy, Abortion. termination and things yep. like that. When yep. things like that are under stress, mm-hmm. that's that's bad for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Mm. So, when you, yeah, things like that are threatened, then we're all threatened. Mm-hmm. I remember we were doing an Australian true crime episode and we were talking to people who work in prisons, like the, uh, the governors of the prisons, and they were talking about women's prisons mm. and that often they were saying... Only when the women go to prison and they have that safety from their abusers, that's when they, it's like going to prison is like the best thing for them because they have that safety and they have that community there, which just feels like a completely backwards. I know. And they have that support. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they have courses and they have, um, yeah, the the support of a network around them. It opens their eyes to Mm. who they could be and the life they could live when they leave prison. Yeah, because a lot of them have never had that in their lives. They don't come from a supportive family, and then they've gone into this a relationship that's not supportive. Yeah, prison for a lot of people, also for mentally ill people, yeah, can be a salvation. It can be mm. the safest place they've ever lived. Mm. It's pretty fucked in, indictment yeah. on our yeah. culture, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Favorite part of the podcast: oh. sparkles and secrets. Cheers, ladies. <laughs> This is where you share your secrets with Michelle. You can go to the link in the bio to share your secret. We cover up your voice by changing your voice up in the machine. Mm. And uh, no one knows who you are. So you can be as honest as you want with Michelle. And I've got some more secrets for you today. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing your secrets with us. So generous. Everyone's very honest. Yes. No one's holding back so far. We've only just started this podcast. Mm. We're a few episodes in Mm. and people are getting pretty raw. All right, let's get into today's. For the past three years, I have been separated from my baby daddy. Me, my children, stepmother, and him are in a polyamorous relationship, which we are keeping extremely quiet. 
all of our kids are so absolutely beyond happy with our situation. However, we can never tell anyone that I am seeing him and her. We have never been happier and we will probably be living like this for a very long time. Oh, that's so great. You know what's funny? It's like you say sometimes, you know, do you think this will change? And I think, oh, well, it's generational, who knows what mm. young people. My daughter says thruple so often you wouldn't even believe it, just like so normally. Mm -hmm. Like we were looking at, uh, we were booking movie tickets the other day and it had these three seats that were together and now I realise it's a couch. It's this little cinema near our house. And she was like, what's that? Do you think that's for a thruple? <laughs> like, I don't know, mate. Like to her, if, she heard, if she heard that, it's she would say, oh, that, why? What's the yeah. problem? You know, yeah. just, just do you, you know. Yes. She just doesn't get any why anyone would care or why anyone wouldn't be happy about that so i mean i i feel the same way i feel like oh you should just be you but i understand of course yeah well at drop off and pick up you know that's not that easy but it's lovely it's not that easy because of the judgment of others yeah yeah because everyone else is going to be like oh that's that the one right that i was telling you yes about. That's got the blah, 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 blah. But, you know, but, but it's nice the, that the they're next happy. generation your kids generation do you think that school drop off maybe will be a, a very different Maybe. I hope so. It reminds me of when I was a teenager. There was Less this, judgment. Yeah. When I was a teenager, there was this real moment towards the end of my high schooling and then uh, sort of after that, so early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, at least I would say four or five of my friends or acquaintances, mums, left their dads and came out as gay. It was just a real moment mm. where obviously these women had always been gay, but so they were women of the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. who felt at that time, whatever, struggled with their sexuality, whatever, for whatever reason, got married, had kids, waited for their kids to grow up, mm -hmm. and then the first chance they got came out mm -hmm. and became like what in those days was was really great lesbians like you know Brisbane, as in as in not quiet about it do you know what yeah. i mean as in we're talking queensland so yeah. they were like moved to west end in yeah. brisbane yeah. you know real great lesbian suburb right. um short hair you know yeah. um armpit hair out yeah um you know just wearing sandals and just whirling around the place and so and, and eyebrows for days and just going i'm gay every yeah. chance they got and yeah. these were ladies who had been real raising families Tuck shop in, mums. In, in the stereotypical yes. in country Queensland husband wife yeah tuck shop mums in country Queensland mm. and now they're whirling around West End going oh, I'm putting on a show <laughs> about gay stuff you know so maybe that's what in course now that you're allowed to be a lesbian anytime you want and nobody yeah. thinks about it twice yes. so maybe your kids will be thruppling at school drop off maybe thrupples will be the lesbians that drop off of yeah, 15 yeah, years yeah. from now. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I hope so because this lady sounds so happy. Mm. Isn't it shit? Well, the kids are happy too. That's what I'm saying. The Everyone's kids don't happy. Shit. Yeah. And isn't it shit that she's like, no, we got to keep it secret and we've mm. never been happier. And because I, I do get it though. Everyone would be scandalized. But okay, what would happen? Like if, if she, like what, what would really happen if she came out and she said, this is what's going on. Everyone fucking deal with it. Yeah. Right? What would happen? It's just juicy. It's really it's juicy. juicy gossip. So it creates gossip. Yeah. And like, obviously. But what does that do? Would I care? No, hmm. because I'm, I don't care if people are talking about me or looking at me. Are you worried about losing friendships? No, no. I mean. As in, is this what she's worried about? This is it. I don't know about the, her, hmm. her neighborhood or her environment. With my friends, I don't think there's anything I could do. Mm. With Don Dons and the gals yeah. in my neighbourhood. You can have a thruple in the spa. Oh, my. They should love it. Mm. But they're they're a great bunch. But I'm sure that for some, I don't know, you know, communities or whatever, like, mate, imagine if I'm back in Toowoomba doing drop-off. Totally. And they go, and I go, oh, by the way, girls, I'm, I'm in a thruple now. Mm. I don't know how that would go down. Yeah. And I think... If you're a shy person, let's say, if everyone. You don't want people talking about if you. If you know everyone's going, that's the one, that's the one I was so telling Yeah. About. She's the one. Mm. That could be overwhelming. Mm. Plus all the kids will be going, I heard your mum and your dad and that's this other lady. Like some people, you know. I wonder if cars are going to have to be re to be redesigned because if you think of like a. Well, yeah, if, if there's a family driving around. 
that's a thruple. Kia Carnival, mate. Well, no, but who sits in the back? Mm. Oh, well, that's just an issue for – that's a social issue. I mean – Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, you want all three at the front. Yeah. Because everyone's equal, right? So there's the driver and then the – you know, your mum and dad are up at the front. Yeah. And the kids are in the back. But, I mean, you just So if you've got a Kia Carnival, yeah. kids are in the back. Of course they are. But and the backpack. Who, well, yeah. But yeah. then there's one person who's yeah. sitting in that middle bit. And clearly they're not as important as the other You've got to watch the front. Sister Wives. I mean, I have you ever watch, watched? No, I haven't oh, watched Sister Wives. Babes. I mean, there's a lot of politics around. Okay. You know, who, do, are, we, are we having designated nights or are we just right. letting it flow? Are we being casual <laughs> mm. or are we just going, Tuesday night's my night? Yeah. It's a whole, it's a whole jam. It's a whole thing. Oh. All right. Let's get into the next secret for today. Hello. I don't want to be married to my husband anymore. It's not that I don't love him, I do love him, but he has hurt me really badly in the past. I don't 21 know. years and kids and I'm so tired. I don't really like him that much and we get along fine, but I don't want to be here anymore. Is that I it? just want to do my own thing and just go out the door and not look back. I can't do that. I've got kids and family and all that. He tries really hard. It's just the way I feel inside. Mm. She's trying to convince me that she shouldn't leave him. She, you got to leave him, girl. Like, it's over. You don't love him. Like, stop telling me you love him. You just feel guilty. Like, I'm being a hard ass because I've spent the last five years going through this with so many girlfriends and with myself. I've had this conversation so many times. with my, I've been her and so many girlfriends that I ended up in this pack of women who we'd all just broken up with our husbands. And we've had the time of our lives just quietly. But this is the hardest bit, especially as she's saying, he's nice, he's great with the kids, he's trying really hard. But after 21 years, it just happens. Like, it's okay. It's okay. He'll be okay. Yeah. It's you just got to do it. You just yeah, rip the band aid off. Yeah, and it, and it is going to be a bit painful for yes. a period. Yeah, but it's going to get better. And you know what? And it, look, this is the worst bit: is other people will make you feel really bad. Right. Maybe your kids. Mm. May other people will say the worst things to you, like, oh, you know, don't you think you're being a bit selfish or. It's unreal, the well, things. And, and there's the, the wording of a failed marriage. Oh, yeah. That, that, word, that wording is just so <clears throat> probably oh. ringing in her mind. Yes. Oh, it's a failed marriage. Yes. Right? Which after 20 years, it's, you know. It's not a not, failed marriage. It's yeah. a fucking very successful, yeah. long, long marriage. And you worry about finances, <laughs> you know, you worry about, oh. And a lot of people by that stage have, like, the house they've always wanted or they've got their house the way they always wanted it and things like and that. And then realised, hang on. Got to have to sell it. Or or it's taken them that 21 years to That's what I mean. have it paid off. You know? And then it's, that moment's happened. Yeah. And then they realise that didn't make me happy. Oh, totally. But, but you know, then you, you're going to have to sell it. You're going to lose it. You're going to – so you start to think all of this stuff, but honestly, I can't I've, – I've never known a woman who hasn't – been glad. I've never known a woman who mm. hasn't been two years, three years down the track mm -hmm. and gone, oh, thank God. Best thing I ever did. Yeah. I've got a girlfriend right now who has just sold the house mm -hmm. and and it was really hard to sell. She didn't get an offer for ages because it's a weird time, you know, mm. no one knows what's going on. And, you know, mm. no one knows whether they, it, they should buy now yeah, or yeah. a house is going to get cheaper yeah. and all that. Mm. So she's finally put it she, and she sold it like a week ago and now she wants to find a rental. So we were just talking yesterday and I said, oh, well, you've done the hard part. And then we went, oh, no, there's no rentals either. I said, you know what? There's lots of hard parts when you're doing this, but every step is a step closer. You yeah. know, you've done one. And she goes, and I know it'll be so worth it. And mm -hmm. I said, it will, it will. It'll just be her and her daughter 
and they'll be free. Mm. And, you know, like yep. she's done it. She's yep. doing it. She's done it. It's something that you think about for years. You lie in bed and think, oh, God, I want to get the fuck out of here. I just mm. want. I don't want to be here. Well, what's the first simple step for her to take? Like, what's, what's that Make realistic the decision. step? Make, Make the decision. And, and have the conversation at least. Yeah. And say, sit down on the couch and say, it's over. Yeah. And even make the have a conversation with your best friend or your mum or someone like that who will support you. Mm. So that when you say it to someone like that, it's real. And then- and then it's really then you start taking action after yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, she sounds like she sounds like she's recording that secret while, that's what I mean. while he's in the house. She's whispering it. In some other room. I know. Totally. So mm. that all of that saying to me, mate, you don't have to live that way. Yeah. You can be free. Mm. Like she's going, I just want to do whatever I want to do. You can. Mm. There's nothing like having your own space. The peace, the freedom. It's it's, it's positive. There's a there's a, there's a happy ending yeah. after the marriage. You don't have to live like that, but yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you very much for for sharing your secret. Yes. Uh, if you want to share yours, all you have to do go to the link in the bio, and we will have your secret on the next episode. Okay, exciting news. It's time to hear from Chatbot 3000, Australian Idol yeah. AO, Marsha Hines. You go, girl. GBT, GPT. Yes. It's AI. It's coming it's for your AI. job. It's AI. You, you, you think it's not? Of course it's not. I, I do feel like it, it, it's going to What did I tell take... you? It doesn't have hands. It doesn't, yeah, but... It can't make you a burger. It can't sew you it a can. jacket. <laughs> it can't make you a burger. No, it, not now. But the thing is... what? Oh, probably that, 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 We'll get there. It can't sew okay, you a jacket. Okay, it can uh, create a burger recipe for you. Big deal it can't make you the burger <laughs> yeah but you know you can make a unique burger recipe it can't in a minute put a filling in your mouth not yet oh my christ how is it ever going to do that it's flat out answering a question about okay uh, you know who is who uh, uh, who's going to lose their job in the next two years who? a copywriter come on that's gonna that's gonna go Think my brother it. does that how ai he still has to ask it a question write an ad for toyota are you paying? Who's going to do Are that? Are you paying a guy to? I'm just. I'm throwing it out there. I'm not trying to hurt your brother's job. I know. Oh, yeah. I, but the thing is, I feel like that job is gone. Yeah, bullshit. He no. It can't be because he still has to talk to the clients. He still has to ring up Mick Malloy and go, Mick, I need you to do a voiceover for Toyota. Who's going to do that? Okay, voiceover. Firstly, voiceover's no, gone. You can't voiceovers. find Mick. Oh, bullshit. Who's going to go? Oh, 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 Mick Malloy. Boo, boo, boo. AI. I mate, it'll. Like, it'll happen. You're on drugs, mate. <laughs> anyway, we need to get into the... You don't think Mick will sue you? You don't think well, Mick will... Well, not me. It'll Mick be will AI. Sue, Mick will he... sue the voiceover 3000 AI. <laughs> Trust me, mate. Mick's not having any of that shit. I'm no. seeing some there's jobs no changing up in the next five oh, years for sure. there's no way. No. And if you think that thing can get a hold of Mick Malloy and ask him to do a read for Toyota, no, you're on drugs, No, no, no. It's not going to even do hard. that. You it's, think it's going to go around every pub in Richmond and find Mick when you need a read? <laughs> it's not going to do you that. Think, no, it can't do that, mate. It's just, it's just going to do no, it. What, it's just going to oh, not even have the conversation oh, with you Mick. You don't get it. You think Toyota is going to settle for that? Toyota wants Mick. <laughs> Okay. Oh, you don't get show business. I don't. All right. Let's get into today. Toyota today's... wants Mick to come no, to the lunch it. at the I... end of the year. Right. And shake that... some hands. Totally. Yeah. You think, you... how do you think the AI that... is going to do that? Just put the, ooh, la ooh, ooh, ooh. Put the laptop on the no, bench. Oh, God, you don't get it. At the lunch. You can talk to them. Firstly, you, you got to ring Mick's brother. Mick's, Mick's not there. Oh, my God. You've got no respect for show business. <laughs> I'm anyway. just saying I do think there are going to be some jobs that are going to be affected by this. And you've got to be yet. aware. You, can, you haven't you, mentioned one yet. Copywriting, be, voiceovers. Be, we, we've discussed copywriting. I think it's going. I'm going to put money on it. It could write. And you know how much I love money. Yes, I do. I'm putting money on it that I think some jobs are going to be gone in the next two years. You haven't mentioned one yet. Copywriting. You, it, AI can write what it wants. Who's getting Mick? You still haven't explained to me who's finding I, Mick. Okay, Matt, you got to help me out here. Someone has to go to the pubs and <laughs> no. find Mick, get him to the studio. Who's going to the lunch at the end of the year? Who's going to the grand final with the clients? <laughs> Mick. I, I love Mick. I don't know Mick. No, Mick's- But Mick might be taken out of the equation. Oh, my Christ. You don't understand clients. They love it. 
They do. They love they the do. lunch with Mick. I mean, they look forward to it every year. <laughs> but, Mickey. Okay, we're, talk, we're also talking about a very, very unique scenario <laughs> yeah. here yes, with we, Mick Malloy. This is what I'm Malloy. Saying. So here's the thing: Mick Malloy is a a, a major personality yes. in Australia. Mick's looking around. I think it's a different story. I think if we're talking about jobs going, I think a voice, you know, like a voiceover artist mm-hmm. in a booth yeah. that no one knows, like uh, you know, coming up tonight or nine, right? Yes, mate, Pete I, Smith. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Right, okay. So, <laughs> you don't have yeah, to know everyone, who's mate. Pete? You don't have to know everyone so in who's, the biz. Who's all right. Pete. Yeah. I mean, Pete. Also, <laughs> everyone loves the lunch, the Christmas lunch with Pete. No one's having lunch with Pete. Everyone the guy's loves what's the, end, up. <laughs> the Channel Nine Christmas lunch with Pete. It wouldn't be the same if Pete wasn't there. Okay. All right. Let's you get into. You kids don't know anything about show business. <laughs> let's, this is what I'm learning. let's get into oh the horoscope gosh. for Taurus. Thank Christ. Because they could be having a shit week. Maybe they are copyrighted. Are you a Taurus? Because no, I'm a Libra. Oh, we, we covered mine in another you're episode. Week, yeah, I am. Yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, Taurus, uh, I believe, according to the chat, chatbot 3000, <laughs> is um, going to have a shit one. And I'm so sorry to tell you that, Taurus. Let's find out exactly why and how. Your practical nature and attention to detail will be a strength this week, Taurus. Use your organizational skills to tackle any challenges at work or home. Stay focused on your goals and avoid getting sidetracked by minor distractions. Mm, or just get ChatGPT to do it all for you. What? Oh my Christ! Who? It's not cleaning the floors. It's not like it's not I cleaning the gutters, mate. Have I, you not seen one of those round things that you can get from Godfrey? I've got one, and the cats keep turning <laughs> yeah. it on in the middle of the night. Uh-huh. Does your cat, cat do yep, that? Yeah, yep. In the middle of the night, it goes. I am beginning the cleaning, and I'm like, oh, the cats. They, they love it. They love turning it on right. in the middle of the night. I so am there beginning you go. the charge. That job's out. Go on. I mean, that job went a long time ago. I'm just saying. Yeah, but she can't, she can't do that. She can't do your gutters. She can't, like, that's a bloke. You need a bloke. <laughs> it's not going to be Mick, obviously, because he charged well, through the roof to do that. But, yeah. Oh, can you imagine? Oh, Christ almighty. I mean, that's a, that's a half million dollar job. You've got Mick <laughs> Lloyd doing your gutters. He'd do it for half a million. But yeah. uh, you, need, you need a bloke to yeah. do your gutters. Yeah. Um, he, he just loves money. Let's be honest. Mick loves mm. money. I mean, he, yeah. he never needs to work again, but- here he is on Sydney Breakfast. Um, <laughs> but you need a bloke to do your gutters. Don't you? Your chatbot's not doing that. Okay. You really. You've yeah. not still. Not, well, I'm not selling it. No. Yeah, okay. It's a bit of fun around the place. It's a bit of fun. It's a bit of fun around the place. Well, good luck, like Taurus, with your week. Bung on a COVID. No. We can't tell this to everyone. No, it should do the opposite because it's telling it, oh, you, you should stay home and clean your house. And I'm saying, bugger that. It's not going anywhere. So get to work so you don't get, have to clean the house. Avoid it. Get out yeah. and about. Yeah. God, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. All right, that is it for today's episode of Can We Be Real? That was a, a big episode today. Yes. Yeah. It was massive. Uh, we will catch you next week. It was as big as a bloody grand final lunch with Mick Malloy. Wasn't yeah. It? <laughs> massive. And Pete. Throw Pete in there too. Oh, and Pete Smith. Yeah.